Well, I woke up with a fever and I'm, I'm feeling pretty achy. So I popped some pills because uh, I, I got to talk about this new radio. I got a ICOM IC7300. Thank you, Gigaparts. They shipped this out for me to take a look at. I love it when retailers send me things because while they'd love to sell you a 7300, they just kind of want you to think of them when you go to buy your next piece of gear. So they don't mind if I'm just honest and objective when it comes to looking at these radios. And I really appreciate that. Uh, the brands are cool too, but you know, you can pretty much walk away thinking that they just are glad to get information out there about what they're selling. Now for me, when the 7300 came out, it was a perfect radio. Well-priced, very capable, allowed me to do all the exploration into HF radio that I so desperately wanted to do. Like the ability to have an internal sound card, cat control with one USB cable, and I was able to manipulate my radio and do things like FT8, Winlink, etc. It was a perfect radio at the perfect time for me, particularly for my channel. It works really well on live streams and doing videos. So I feel from my limited time with the new Mark II that this is the perfect upgrade to a radio. I'm not going to say this is the perfect radio because, you know, there are much more expensive radios. ICOM has more expensive radios that have more capabilities, but this is a perfect upgrade. And I'm going to try to go through each one of the major upgrades. I assume you know a lot about the 7300 already. It is the most popular HF radio ever made, selling a ton of units. It is unrivaled in its ability to reach out to the market and be very enjoyed. There's no way that you wouldn't know about this radio if you were in the HF space. It is an incredibly popular radio. There are four major areas that I think break this up. They're unique upgrades that you should take a look at, and we're going to go through them one by one. The first is the upgraded receiver. Yes, when you have a radio and it's a bit old and you want to make an upgrade, the best thing, you, the starting point, the foundation is let's bring up the technology of the receiver, the transmitter. Let's see if we can eke out some more performance by bringing in some new technology. And they've done that here. The receiver sounds great. I am told, although I haven't been able to test this yet because I haven't had it for very long. Now, something else that goes along with the upgrades to the internals of the radio, both the receiver and the transmitter, is that they've lowered the power consumption on this radio, which is fantastic. It's another thing that people love to see when there's an upgrade on a radio line. Improvements in quality of life, performance, and now your battery performance. RMDR, I had to look this up, is reciprocal mixing dynamic range, and they've improved it in the 7300 Mark II, which will help for both transmit and receive by lowering noise interference or just effective signal to or from noise. And I generally found in my high noise environment that the signals are louder, more intelligible, even when you run things like the noise reducer, which I've never really used so much on the 7300. I found that it was it didn't make that much of a difference to me. This is an improvement, and I, I have a sample here that I think kind of shows it well. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. How many stations calling? Uh, try it again. Kilo 8, Charlie, standing by. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Kilo Golf 7, uh, Kilo Mike. Uh, Merry Christmas from the train, uh, Pat. Over. Nice to hear you again on the uh, on the train here. Uh, have a great Christmas. AA Charlie on the Christmas train. Q, where is that? Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Kilo India? Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. 5-9 here into Southern California. Okay, the Southern California. Try it again. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zoo. Merry Christmas on the Christmas train. Over. Yeah, copy, copy. You're actually 10 over S9 now here into Southern California. Thank you for being out there. 7 3. Dodger, thank you. Merry Christmas, KA Charlie. <laughs> that guy's <is> moving. <laughs> Thanks again to Gigaparts for sending the 7300 Mark II out for me to take a look at. Gigaparts would love it if you'd consider them for your next gear purchase or radio purchase. The link is in the video description. If you use the code JOSH, you will get double the rewards points, which can go to for future radios and other gear that Gigaparts has at their store. Thanks a lot, Gigaparts. Appreciate it. Back to the video. Another major upgrade is the addition of the HDMI port. Now, this isn't for everybody. For me, this would have been massive because I use the HDMI port to funnel my video into the feed when I'm doing live streams. Now, 
the cool thing about this is this is to me showing that icom is listening to the feedback from the users in this space dvi ports have been very popular in the radio space for many years even though as a standard that has kind of been eclipsed by hdmi and it finally took i think the 7300 to crack the seal on that and say hey look we're all moving to hdmi and i'll be surprised if you see radios come out that don't just use standard hdmi at this point so kudos to icom on that one new ports around the back you can see you now have an rx in and out as well as an alc send key that was there before your hdmi port is here as well as your LAN connection, very good. And then they have USB-C now. USB-C, everybody, not B, but C. Shout out to that, awesome. In the same vein, radios like the 7610, the 9700, and now the 7760 all support local area networking via a Cat5 or Cat6 cable. This is something that I think is a standard item. It's not necessarily something a part of the upgrade chain, if you will, and ICOM agrees because they've added networking capability to the 7300. This opens a ton of doors for remote radio operation. When you have this connected and you're on the same network as the device, you can use portable devices like a tablet or a phone to connect to the radio and actually operate it. Transmit via the mic and speaker on your phone and get a really nice capability when you're out and about if you've opened up, say, a VPN, virtual private network, to be able to connect to your radio when you're on the go. This is a fantastic feature for the nerdier set that's, like, that's going to get into this kind of thing. But mark my words, I think this is going to become a larger and more more established thing in the community when more people start to want this remote capability. Now, one of the cool things about adding this networking or remoting capability is if you go to the menu settings and scroll down to network under remote settings, you can actually select and create authentications for two users. This is really handy because you could be user one with administrator privileges, and then you could allow a secondary user to not have privileges and you can have some level of control uh, that way with the radio which is which is great you may have somebody you want to give a little bit of access maybe you don't want them to have transmit capability or whatnot and you can play around with some of those things now the last two major upgrades i'm going to cover in this video are ones that i think also tie directly to the user market and icom listening the first is the secondary receive antenna port. Now you can only have one antenna receiving at one time, so there's no diversity between these antennas, meaning you can't like left ear use a vertical antenna and right ear use a dipole, but you can use the receive only port to attach something like a loop on the ground antenna if you're, a very, if you're in a very high noise environment uh, area like, like I am, or a bog, beverage on the ground antenna, which is a very noise resistant antenna but a very good receiving antenna. So you may want a really nice transmitting antenna, but a good receive only antenna. And for years, users have been adding their own secondary receive port to 7300s. In fact, there's a kit you can buy to add this capability. And ICOM said, well, in our new model, the Mark II, we're going to add that port on the back and you can then select it as a user if you'd like a receive only antenna. Again, a fantastic thing of ICOM listening taking in feedback from others and going, we can do that, we can make this improvement, and I love it. And then last but not least, an area where actually ICOM is a little bit behind, they've added CW decode. CW decode is, to be honest, let me just be very honest and open with this. It's a feature that many people ask for, but I don't think they really want it or need it. And, I, and I'll try to clarify. Good CW decode is incredibly difficult. You need a good key, a good hand on the key on the actual transmitting side so that you can get good CW in for the decoder to work very well. This is not so much of a problem if you were like in a contest where there's lots of people using computer-aided CW, then the decoders works pretty well. But for hand-driven CW, decoders can be a little bit hit or miss. Now, I know a lot of companies have their own decoder, and it's more or less become a standard now for base station radios to have this capability. So ICOM said, at least I think they did, said, you know what, let's just go ahead and throw it in. Let's get our own version of that up and running. And it seems to be working pretty well. I've been able to code stations that aren't super loud, which by the way, the loudest stations are a bit easier to copy and decode, but also the lower signal stations as well. And they did pretty well in that too.
Easy peasy. Now those are the major upgrades for the Mark II version of the 7300 over the standard. And I think that they are enough of a, a Voltron-esque addition that everyone that's interested in a 7300 should consider. This is a great improvement to an already fantastic radio that is well loved within the community. And I'm glad I got to check it out. So thank you to Gigaparts. I will have this for a little while. I'm hoping to actually do an AB comparison between the 7300 stock original and the Mark II for receiver sensitivity, but I got to yank it out of my go box and I'm dreading the idea of doing that just for one video. But I'll do it for you guys. If you want me to do that, post it in the comments below. I am Josh, KI6NAZ. Yes, I'm battling a cold. Sorry for my voice, and I'll talk to you later. 73.